Hi, thanks so much for joining me. I'm Jenny from The Glittered Rose. You can find me under The Glittered Rose on Instagram and Etsy. I thought today I'd share with you the 123 punch board. In it, with it, you can make envelopes, bows, and 3D boxes. Um, and I think it's a fantastic little piece of equipment. I'm personally not very interested in the bows or the boxes. I got it for the envelopes. But there are also other things you can make, like a file folder, coin envelopes, just by cutting off um, a couple of the edges and folding it in a different way. You can do string tie boxes. It's really very versatile. I think it's fantastic. Um, I had mentioned that I got it and a shout out to Bobette. She, she would like a review, so that's what I'm doing. Um, it's fantastic. You get this sticker and that is with your um, metric measurements, so in centimeters. Or you just use the inch measurements that's on the back of the um, flap. So I thought I'd make an envelope for this card because it's very three dimensional. It's it's really rather thick with the rosette. Um, it wouldn't fit in a standard A2 envelope. So I'm going to make something just a little bit larger just to accommodate that thickness. So um, after we punch this envelope out um, I might do a little bit of um, mail art with it and make it look pretty so I got myself some um, paper to use with the punch I didn't want anything too thick, but I didn't want anything too thin. And I wanted something that would take some water and some mixed media mediums. So I've grabbed this mixed media paper. It's about 170 GSM. And the pages are really large. So the pages will be big enough for the largest envelope. So you need something that would be 11 and a half inches square for the very largest envelope, which I don't think I'll probably use anyway, but I thought um, this Fabriano mixed media paper is quite um, well priced, so that's why I grabbed it. So the card that's the next card up from the A2, um, I need um, a piece of paper that is. Uh, eight and three quarter inch squares so this is for a card that's four and a half by six inches um, in size so they're always squared for these envelopes so I need something that is um, eight and a quarter inches so I'm going to cut this paper down with my trimmer and then I'll be back on my chart for this size envelope, the punch guide says you need to start at set at three and seven eighths of an inch. So I have scored my lines for that size and punched. Now the important thing is when you turn it around, you don't need to line it up to that that um, that size, the three and seven eighths. You line up the line with um, what's called envelope score groove. So you line that line up with the line on the left, just here, and you punch. And then score. So you pop your your scoring knife into that groove. Sometimes I find it a little bit easier to um, go from the bottom up. But there's also an arm. I should have brought the arm out. It would have been easier, which makes the score line longer. So you just spin it around, line those, um, line that line up on the left, and score. And punch. It is 
such a simple, easy way to do it. Once you realize that the score line on the left is where it needs to be um, lined up. So that's your envelope. I've decided I want um, a rounded edge. So um, just popping it there, it's marked corner rounder. So you just push it into the groove and punch that corner. There, we are memory makers do do another um, envelope punch and I don't like it as much as this one because the flap um, meets down at the bottom of the envelope. And I'll show, show you later why I don't like that, why I went with this one. All right, so then you just easily fold in. I also love the um, score tool that you get with this. It's got a really nice pointed edge. I think I might save it for my... Um, for my cards and it's as simple as that it's all made and that's your envelope I'm going to grab some paper um, and make the smallest envelope that the um, punch makes so I'll be back I'll chop up a bit of paper and um, I'll show you the smallest envelope that it makes Yep, I'm just testing. This looks like it's going to be a good size for this card. Alrighty, I'll cut my next lot of paper and we'll make another envelope. So this little um, envelope is um, suitable for a card that's two by three and a half. So, so quite a small little card. Um, I needed five and one eighth um piece of paper and i needed to start at two so i've started at two and now i'm just lining up that line on the left and punching and then lining that up again on the left And scoring and punching so it really is a very quick and easy way to make an envelope once you know how to do it it doesn't take long at all that's your little envelope I love the fact that you can make an envelope out of whatever you want you can get it to match whatever you're popping inside it you can cut it out of scrapbook paper it just really doesn't matter so now i'm going to round those corners and we'll fold this together so that I can show you what it looks like because it's so so small the flap um, comes all the way down which I don't love but it is a tiny little envelope you can get a mini envelope maker which I might look at but just so you know it's it does make small envelopes these would be good for journals as well so that's why I showed you that. Okay, so now for the fun part, and that is making this envelope look pretty. So I wanted to match my rosette card. Um, I'll link the um, link for that rosette card in case you're interested up above. And um, yeah, so I'm using a very similar technique to what I used in the card. I'm just smooshing some of that ink onto my non-stick mat and then spraying water so it beads and making a massive mess of everything. <laughs> but that's a fun bit. I'll just clean this up. Sorry, guys.
Hope you're having nicer weather than what we're experiencing today in in my local area. Um, it's cold and it's windy. We've just been enjoying some beautiful sun and some beautiful warmer weather and then just overnight, literally, it's just turned cold. So <laughs> I'm glad to be inside with my heater today. Just give this a dry off. So with this type of method, I think drying between layers is important. That that way it layers on top of each other and it doesn't mix in too much. And it just looks really great. You could use any dye inks. So you could use distress oxides or, well, it oxides and... Your normal distress pads are um, hybrid, but you could also use dye ink pads for this. Just ones that you can add water to. But I wanted to go with colours that I used in my card so that they match. So I'm just layering it up. So I've gone in with Peacock fe Feathers and un Uncharted Mariner. And now I'm going in with some Frayed Burlap. And just drying in between times. Just to make sure that I can get that layered kind of um, almost grungy look. I'm going to do some more layering and drying. Because I do realise this would be boring to watch. And I'll be back when we're ready to stamp. Okay, so there's lots of layers and splatters and there's layers on top of layers. I love it. <laughs> so I've just grabbed out my Misty and I'm going to use the cushioning on that. And I'm going to randomly stamp um, some stamps. It's very randomly and I don't care if it doesn't stamp properly. It, that's going to be the look. Um, I'm using a permanent ink, so I'm using some VersaFine Clear here, just in a dark blue. I think it matches quite well with the Uncharted Mariner. Okay, so this is um, a butterfly stamp from, well, it was from a magazine. It was just sitting outside the front of a um, newsagent's the other day. The uh, um, magazine wasn't attached. They were just selling the stamps that came off the magazine. So I grabbed it. It was like an A4 sheet full of different um, vintage looking stamps for 10 bucks. I thought, don't mind if I do. So, I love this butterfly. It's got some um, writing in the body. Oops, <laughs> I think Pat decided to go with the stamp. <laughs> All right, that's looking pretty good. I like that. I'm thinking I might try mailing this. I'll pop a, a printed label on the front. And I've just grabbed a leaf from the same stamp set and um, in Portobello, which I think matches the um, brownie colour that I've got. What ink pad was that again? Oh, the frayed burlap oxide. So I think that matches quite nicely. I just decided I was going to use a permanent um, ink pad just in case there was some moisture left um, on that, that envelope. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks really nice. It's just got enough um, to be interesting without it being too much. Oh, I think that's pretty. I love it. So now I'm going to um, run some tape along those tabs. 
and I have just realized I've put too long tape on it. <laughs> oh well, I'll um I'll leave it there because then when I fold over the flap when the card's in it, that'll hold it down anyway. It won't matter. I'm not sure what I was thinking, but in my defense, I didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm feeling pretty tired. <laughs> I better work. I think that'll be good. Okay, so now for the moment of truth. Will it fit? Yep, perfect. And it doesn't stretch it out. Oh, that looks so nice. Look at that. I always think envelopes look better when they're full. I think they also look better when they're not just plain white. <laughs> so the really great thing is you can cut a smaller piece, about half an inch, so go the, the next size down to line your envelope. But I didn't make the back of this paper very messy, so I don't feel the need to um, line it. Okay, so the reason I don't like um, the flap coming all the way down to the bottom is that quite often I will um, seal up my envelopes with a wax seal. And if the tab goes right to the bottom of the envelope, there's not that room to place the wax seal. I'm going to do a wax seal now. I think I have a butterfly. I'll be back when I'm all set up. Okay, so now I am heating up my wax in my little um, wax heater furnace. I've got, I think I use five little pieces of wax um, because my molds are a little bigger. As much as I have tried to get things straight, I mean not straight, round, I just can't. So these little um, moulds I think are fantastic. And I've gone with a nice deep blue and I'm just popping my butterfly in. Even with this mould, it's not going to come out perfect. They never do. Uh, putting that um, little silicon sheet underneath it, it's probably a good idea. I didn't want to, I mean, I think my craft mat is um, heat resistant, but I didn't want to take the risk. I don't want to be cracking it. Let's pop that out. Probably could have left it a little bit longer. I'm just going to highlight those high points, bring out the butterfly, and I think that looks really sweet. It's gorgeous. Mind my hands. I know I say it all the time, but <laughs> it's a telltale sign I've had a good time. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pop some double-sided sticky tape and glue it to the back of the envelope and then we'll have a look together at at the thing at it all finished. I hope this video has proven how easy it is to make your own envelopes. I really do highly recommend the 123 punch board. I couldn't find it in Australia. I had to grab it on eBay on sorry, Amazon. I will put a link in my description box below if you're interested in grabbing yourself one. It is an affiliate link, so I will get a very small commission at no cost to you if you use my link. All right, we're all done. I have to say I love it. I love mail art. I just love the look. Um, and I love being able to have matching envelope with my card. I think it just adds something a little bit. It just, it's special. Let me know down below what you think of the card. I mean, of the envelope. Um, and if you want to make your own envelopes. Hit the like button and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Till next time. Bye for now.